Hey, what's up? My name is PJ, and in this video, I'm going to change the way that you guys think about editing in Lightroom using a technique called Orange and Teal. Hope you enjoy. Okay, so this video is based off of a look that is going around Instagram and photography in general, especially natural light photography called orange and teal. It's something that's just been used in cinematic video for quite some time. And most of the Instagram photographers that you probably follow would use this technique. Um, the main idea, the main concept is the blue hues, you shift them down to a teal color and the red hues, you shift them up to an orange color. Um, that's the basis. This is my own version. Um, I've done, I've recorded this video twice already with different but equally good results. Um, but I want to do this properly because every time I do, I make a new look and a new preset and I'm starting to um, build up a good library of this style of photo. So here we go. Try and follow along with me. I'll put these raw files up for download if you would like to. And let's get right into it. So this is a photo of Dave Tran. You'll probably have seen it if you follow my videos in the um, Sigma Art Natural Light Portrait video. Anyway, I figured this was a good place to start because this is when I sort of properly discovered this technique. So the first thing I do in the develop module here, I might close this for now. The first thing I do in the develop module is before I touch anything else, I'm going to scroll all the way down to profile in the camera calibration tab. I'm going to change it to neutral. This is something that I do in particular. I haven't seen many other people do it, but I feel like you get more depth and more dynamic range out of a photo and you can just pull out some deeper tones. So that looks good so far. Let's see the difference. Very small difference. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this blue primary hue slider and I'm going to slide that almost all the way down. So I'm next going to grab the red primary hue slider and I'm going to slide that up until it's a deep orangey color. I'm going to take the saturation down a little bit because it's a bit too much and maybe down in the blues a bit. Um, and it's sort of getting to close where I like it. And so between the red and the blue, you can balance the two out. You can make fine adjustments with either. either but I find a really easy way to do it is balance them out with the green slider. So I want to make a really warm orangey color somewhere around there. Might even turn that saturation up and then we can pull it back a little bit in the other two. But a really nice warm orangey color to start with. Something very flattering on the skin tones. And I also really love to change the green tones in a photo to orange or yellows. I think that's um, just really cool and it takes it out of that um, normy realistic photo edit kind of style. Cool, so that's pretty good. I might just increase the exposure a little bit here. No, actually I'm not gonna touch the exposure for now. So let's do some toning. I'm gonna grab this tone curve here. Make sure, I'm not sure what this setting is called, but you can click on this little icon in the bottom right hand corner and you can manipulate the, cur the curve um, by clicking it instead of the sliders. So first thing we're going to do um, is pretty common. We're going to crunch these blacks a little bit. Just bring that up um, to bring those darkest tones out. Then we're going to click a little dot in the middle of this curve right here. And in the low mids, so if you think of this tone curve, these are the high, the highlights, these are the shadows, and in the middle you have the midtones. So in the low mids, pull that down to create a uh, S curve, as it's known. So anytime you add more contrast, you're going to, without realizing, get more saturation as well. That's um, totally fine at the moment. We'll work on that. <clears throat> so let's grab the shadows. I'm gonna pull out the shadows. And when I do that, I often like to pull back on the blacks to bring, bring out the dark tones, but the darkest, I wanna keep them close to black, so it's more of a fine contrast. So let's do the same with the whites, up with the whites, down with the highlights, to try and make a more uh, gradual contrast, and um, so the fine details are 
accentuated, not the overall contrast of the picture. Okay, so now the speaking of the overall contrast, I want to take some of that saturation out. So I'm going to pull back on this main contrast slider. And just for something, just to play around, I'm going to bring up the vibrance of the photo and down the saturation. I think I want to put a little bit more contrast back in now. So it's sort of the the beauty and the, the bad and good thing about Lightroom is it's all about the interaction of the sliders. Unlike Photoshop, where you can do one thing, make another layer and put that on top. This is all about the interaction and the way the sliders work together. So um, you can change something in multiple different ways. So I'm gonna put some more contrast back in there. I reckon that's pretty good so far. Let's do a little bit of grain. I mentioned this in a previous video. I've decided recently that grain is important, um, particularly in natural light photos, because it really ties the whole image together um, and unifies it. And I think that's really cool. I'm going to, I want to maybe change the blue tones in the sky a little bit. So let's grab the luminance, grab some of these blues. I'm going to pull that down a tad and I'm going to shift the blue hues um, maybe down a little bit and take some saturation out because I'm not particularly loving the jeans here on Dave. That's actually looking pretty good. It's possibly a little yellow for my liking. So I'm going to drop the white balance slightly, but you know what? That's a pretty good edit in my mind. Just going to fiddle with these a little bit to see if I like it more or less. I reckon that's pretty good. Another thing that I sometimes do if it is looking very yellow is I'll grab the, in the split toning panel here, I'll grab the highlights and I'll put in a little bit of a blue tone on top. Let's just try the others, see how they look. Maybe something a little more neutral like that. So let's have a look at before and after. Pretty cool, I reckon it's very yellow, but that's the way that I like it. I might even play with these skin tones a little bit more. <clears throat> the only other thing that I'd really do is sharpening. So let's bump this up a little bit here, bump up the detail, and then, like I always do, hold down Option, and we're gonna mask all of this sharpening out. So it's only hitting the edges, just the, you know, the eyes and the, the real, that real micro contrast, those, um, just the bits that need to be sharp, are gonna be sharpened. So that's about it. So what I'm gonna do now, because I'm really happy with that, is I'm going to go up to the presets panel here. I'm gonna click plus, and we're gonna make, hang on, what, what are my other ones? So we're gonna make page 46 YouTube ABCDE. YouTube E. And that looks good. Okay, so here's the cool part. Here is the preset that I've just made, page 46 YouTube E. I've, over the last couple of days, I've made six really good ones. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've um, recorded most of them in six different videos, um, but I haven't, I've been really indecisive because every time I do it, I find something that I like more and something that I can use on my old photos. And the coolest thing is I can dig through the archives and find photos that are in all sorts of different lighting situations that were at one time or another throwaways that I probably didn't use or would have discarded because I didn't know how to edit. And I can put these new presets on them. I've just picked a couple of random ones out here. This is from a couple of months back with my buddy Panda. Let's put on that new preset that we just made, page 46 YouTube E. And like straight out of the box, that actually looks so good. 
Um, very neutral, flattering skin tones. I love the yellows in the back. The greens are now an interesting tone. I've got some um, other interesting ones here. This one is Emile. It's from a band promo shoot from like years and years ago. And I'm pretty sure I never used this because I don't know why, but I shot it really blue. Um, it's done with strobes at nighttime on an old crop center Nikon. But anyway, let's put that new preset on. So a lot of the times when you use a preset on a photo, you will need to adjust a couple of things, white balance, exposure, or contrast. In this one, all I'm gonna do is take out the grain. I'm going to bump up that exposure. And do you know what? I might even leave it there. Leave it there, maybe a little more contrast. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty amazing difference if you ask me. That's a photo I would have never considered using in the past. Um, let's have a look at one of these other ones. From a um, film set, I worked behind the scenes on a film set. And let's put on that new preset, Page YouTube E. Very warm. You could easily change the white balance a little bit, but that actually looks fantastic out of the box. So yeah, I've got all sorts of these photos that I've just been just trying these new presets on and they tend to work fantastic almost straight out of the box. They're photos that I would have never, ever considered using, just throwaways. Um, so I find this really exciting. So what I've been doing is I've been trying to make a set. I've been trying to make a, a library and really refine my editing and my presets. And that's where you guys come into it. If you have enjoyed this and you've learned something, I would love for you guys to submit photos the as hard as they can possibly be, all these different lighting situations, because I would like to use those to refine the presets that I'm making right now. So as because I love you guys so much and my subscribers are the best in the world, I'm gonna give you guys the preset that I just made, Page 46 YouTube E. I'm gonna put it up for free download. It's gonna be in a Dropbox link in the description. All I ask is if you do use it, please share the photos that you use. And um, I would love it if you guys could submit pictures for me to test this whole series. Like I said, I've got, let's have a look. I've got six presets that I've made so far and I wanna refine and perfect them. So yeah, this is what I ask of you guys. Submit photos to me. I want to practice these presets. If you like, you can download this one for free. I'm not going to sell it or anything. I just want you guys to see how good this technique is. Try it for yourself. I really hope you enjoy it because I have loved doing this. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you learned something and enjoyed it, give me a big fat thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video.